hey guys, my name is Abdullah. I'm a software engineer. And roughly the first three years or so of my professional software engineering career, I took notes on an almost daily basis. Um, basically, any time that I would have an epiphany or any time that I would feel like I learned a really important lesson, I would jot it down in a notebook. Basically, what that means is now I have a notebook filled with the most important lessons, the most important epiphanies that you as a software engineer might have your first couple of years. Uh, and since I'm such a nice guy, <laughs> I've decided to go ahead and share this stuff with you guys. And I know you guys don't like reading, so um, I'm going to go ahead and upload these um, in video format to you guys in this video series. I hope by doing this, some of you guys will be able to take something away from these lessons. I hope that it will speed up your development, your growth as a programmer. And for those of you who do like to read, I'm also going to post text versions of these notes on my website, a link to which I will put in the description of this video. So if you want to see the text version, go ahead and check out the website. And if you want to see the, the video version, basically me talking about these lessons, then follow this series. Okay, so I've gone ahead and, and wrote all four of the lessons on my crooked whiteboard over here. <laughs> but um, let's go ahead and go through with lesson one. So lesson one is basically the, uh, that you should take on any challenge that comes your way. So a lot of the times when you're at work, um, you know, your team might receive a new project or they might receive a feature request or a big bug fix. And we're going to call all of these a challenge, right? Now, you may have to learn something new in order to complete this challenge. So you may have to learn some new um, programming language, maybe a new framework, or even a, a concept like uh, linear algebra, right? Um, for example, when I was uh, working, we had a request to do some 3D components, so to make a 3D application. And um, I, was, I wasn't really very familiar with linear algebra, but I had to learn linear algebra in order to uh, successfully complete this task. So basically, the point is that a new challenge comes along often. And you want to see these challenges as opportunities. You want to take these opportunities. You never want to shy away from them because that's exactly what they are. They're opportunities. Now, first, I'm going to go through the benefits of why you want to take on these challenges. And then I'll quickly discuss uh, the main reason why I think people tend to shy away from them. So the first and obvious benefit is, is that you're going to gain whatever new thing that the challenge comes with. So, for example, if it required you to learn a new programming language, well, guess what? Now you know a new programming language. And if it required you to learn some new math like linear algebra, well, now you know a super useful skill, linear algebra. The second benefit of taking on these challenges is that in addition to learning the specific things that the challenge forces you to learn, you improve your general learning abilities. So you become better at learning in general. And the third benefit that taking on new challenges offers you is that you gain uh, more confidence. So the more you complete these challenges, the more confident you become in your abilities and the less likely you are to let these challenges pass by. So it's sort of like a positive feedback loop because the more of these challenges you do, the more confidence you build and the less of these challenges or opportunities you let pass by. So the main reason why I think that most people shy away from these challenges is because they fear, uh, they fear that they won't be able to complete it. Um, or, you know, alternatively, I guess they could just be too lazy and they don't want new work. And if that's your case, then uh, I don't know what to tell you. you know, there is nothing I can do about that. Uh, that's just who you are. And um, I'm not going to say anything about that. I'll leave it at that. But if you are like most people and you shy away from these challenges because you, you, you're fearing failure, you don't want to fail the new task. Um, well, I have something to say about that. And basically, the bottom line is you should never, ever not do something um, because you're, you're afraid that you're going to fail at it. In fact, several failures are a very normal in, in a necessity. They're a necessity to eventual success. Um, so if I wasn't clear enough about that, let me reiterate. Um, you need to fail a couple times in order to eventually reach that success. So if you're afraid of failing, you will never reach um, the success point. Okay, so that leads us to the second lesson. So the second lesson is, is that you have to believe in yourself that you will always figure it out. You will always solve the problem. 
Um, a lot of the times uh, you are faced with really difficult problems in programming. It's a difficult profession. You're faced with difficult problems. Um, they're big problems. There's a lot of unknowns. There is maybe a new framework that you've never used, a new language, a new math that you have to learn. So there's a lot of unknowns. And you're like, man, there's no way I can solve this. There's no way I can complete this task. Um, well, I can tell you from plenty of experience that somehow, some way, you, you always manage to get it done. You always manage to solve it. So I, I'm just, you know, I just want you to know that because I've been through that many, many times as a self-taught programmer. Um, there was a lot in programming that, I mean, I had a, a good education, so I had a solid foundation, um, especially with like my, my basic logic and math was very good. But I had to learn a lot of programming and software engineering related concepts by myself. So I felt this constantly, uh, these big, uh, seemingly impossible to solve problems. Um, but every single time I solved them, no exceptions. So what does that tell you? Um, <laughs> well, one, it tells you you shouldn't trust yourself. Um, but no, seriously, it, it tells you that um, I think we have a, a tendency to undermine our own abilities. And I think it's human nature that if you spend enough time, if you spend enough effort um, around something, uh, then you, you always manage to figure it out. Okay, so the third lesson is to you want to get a fresh pair of eyes to look at your problem whenever you're stuck. So oftentimes you're, you're stuck at, it, at solving some programming problem or even more frequently, uh, it's when you're debugging. It's when you're trying to find the source of a bug, the cause of a bug. You get stuck and you start banging your head on that same problem for a, a very, very long time. Um, so you need to recognize when it's time to take a break because oftentimes when you just take a quick break, when you go for a walk, uh, you know, when you go out for lunch and then come back to the problem with a fresh mind, uh, you solve it way, way, way quicker. Um, and if you don't want to take a break, you know, uh, you can get someone else's fresh pair of eyes. So it doesn't necessarily have to be your own fresh pair of eyes. Um, it could be someone else's. So, you know, one of your coworkers who hasn't looked at this problem, let them have a go at it. They're going to bring in a, a not tired, um, fresh, new perspective, which will uh, help you solve the problem much quicker. And for those of you like me who are a bit too stubborn because you want to solve the problem yourself, um, I, what I've noticed is that oftentimes your coworkers don't just straight up, you know, jump in and they figure it out and make you look bad. <laughs> um, but basically, like, they don't know how to solve it either, but they may say something um, that just kind of gives you a fresh perspective, and, and uh, with that fresh perspective, you can solve it yourself. Okay, and the last tip for this video is basically um, the teddy bear method. It's been called the teddy bear method. So I found out about this method uh, through one of my really awesome coworkers. Uh, shout out to Phil. <laughs> um, so Phil told me about this, and it's basically like, have you ever noticed that when you have a problem, right? Um, and this is especially true in programming, but, but I think this is much more general. It's much bigger than programming. Whenever you have a problem and you go ask somebody for help and you're describing your problem, sometimes while you're describing that problem, you come up with the answer. So the teddy bear, the reason why this is called the teddy bear method is because some people say that um, instead of asking a real person, you go and just talk to an in inanimate object just to force yourself, uh, just to force yourself to think through the problem a little bit deeper. Now, I take this a step further and I say that instead of, you know, you pretending to ask, you know, a teddy bear um, this question, pretend that someone else is asking you this question. Because I don't know about you guys, but what I've noticed um, for myself is that when other people ask me a question, um, I, work, uh, <laughs> I work a lot harder to solve it than when it's my own question. I don't know what it is. I guess it's just the fact that somebody else is depending on you to solve something. You just, you tend to work a little bit harder. Um, so whenever I have a really difficult question, um, I pretend that somebody else comes to me with that same exact difficult question and they need my help. And for some reason that makes me think a little bit harder and uh, I'm more likely to find the answer. Okay, so that's it for this video. Um, that's four lessons that I've learned throughout my years of software engineering. I hope that you guys found them helpful and I hope that you guys continue to see, uh, continue to watch the remainder of the lessons that I present in the subsequent videos. So thanks for watching this video and I hope to see you in a subsequent one. Bye-bye.